here we are back on the heads and now I'm going to do my, my final touch up with the entrances like on the manifold, take this, pull it to the lines, uh, do my little bit of uh, blending just to let everything roll in and touch everything up. And uh, of course, then I'll have to go in here. I got to get the epoxy where I pushed and pushed and pushed from this side to get it to blend around the tube to give me a little ramp. So I'm going to go ahead and do my touches on that, take the epoxy out, conclude the intake port, and then it's on to the combustion chambers for the race out. All right. Okay, getting ready to lay the chambers. Now, as you can see, I've already been grinding in this area. I've already spent quite a bit of time on that because what happens, you have to make you a spark plug. I broke this off and then I removed a little electrode because you have to thread this in and what was happening was before I started grinding right here it was four threads about this far up inside there so you gotta grind from here to here and lower this area and blend it like I said once again 327 inches uh, I, man I can't I, it's, the compression is going to kill me so normally I take out this hump, pull that in and come up to unshroud the valves. Can't do it this time. So it was just a careful measure of being able to go in there and just grind from here to here, here and here to level the combustion chamber side to where it barely kisses off. You can see where uh, the grinder marks touch it right there. It just barely touches it. Then I pull it out and I know I got the right depth set so that it's going to be able, you know, for the electrodes and all that to be out to burn. Then I go in here and just, this is awful, the ridges. I will pull that back and roll it and blend it, but I just can't dig and do what I normally like to do because of compression volume. Another thing I'd like to point out, if you notice, I'll try to zoom in on you. Look at the residue that that leaves behind whenever I pump the head. I mean, some of that stuff is so hard that you just about can't take a wire brush to some of it sometimes and get it off. Um, when it cooks it, buddy, it cooks it. So I, I have a real fine ziz wheel that I go over and touch it, but any of the water holes uh, that where that, you know, my pressure plate, you know, when mainly when you take it off, it's hot, the head's about 200 degrees, it's going to have a little bit of residue on it in different spots. So, anyway, that's where we're at right now. I'm working on the combustion chambers, and we'll get that done and finish getting epoxy out of the intakes, and, and then uh, start on the exhaust. On the exhaust side, we're going to go to Felpro 1204, because the square size, I, I know that that covers a 1 in 5 8 tube. When you get into the 1405s, you have to have a 1 and 3 quarter tube or you can have all kinds of reversion going on. More on that later. Let's get on this chamber and get these things knocked out. I believe that uh, I had covered this a little bit, but we'll go ahead and touch on it again. I'm not altering the shape of the chamber. You can tell that by the fact I haven't blue dockumed it in and all that. Um, all I'm doing is getting these machinist ridge, which the diameter of this valve is 1.989 and 1.575. It's just enough to where when I drop it, it'll protect the seat, but I can go in here like this with the point of my finger and all I'm doing is knocking that edge. Normally I would level that right there and pull that down and unshroud it really good, but we just can't afford to lose that volume because of the 327 cubic inch displacement. So basically, the chambers are untouched except for the little machinist ridge I take out and just cutting enough meat right here to get the spark plug where it's level with the chamber. Other than that, it is a stock pro comp chamber. Nothing fancy here. Just, you know, nothing in the way, no ridges or anything. 
I just wanted to touch on that to, to let you know that's what's going on. Hey, I just thought I'd take a minute uh, to show you some differences. This side over here, which you can tell the kind of rough reflective, <clears throat> this is the stone. Uh, this is the first chamber with the 50 grit polish that I go in here and polish this with after the stone i just wanted to give you a little bitty look man this turned out really nice there's no machinist ridges um it's just great this little bitty hump right here the way i've got it laid back it's not going to interfere maybe with uh 15 percent of the valve in this area it might hinder airflow just a little bit maybe the first 150 to 100 thousandths of lift but i'll sacrifice that for compression so anyway we're good right here we'll go 50 grit polish because anything after that y'all know how i feel about that uh this right here is it i'll say it one more time you couldn't measure the difference in horsepower with an eddy current dyno the whole thing is once you get the 50 grit polish that's it you're done because the whole purpose of it ain't no kind of power gain it's just to keep carbon from building up and, and you know this is actually one of them situations where leaving this rough would have benefited him in a way because um He's going to be lacking a cc or two, probably on the compression on 327, but still, um, I go ahead and, you know, do it anyway, because uh, some people really get spooked over that. It has to be ported and polished, or it's not a performance head, one of them kind of deals. So, I do it to satisfy. I look at it like this. I'm not a cosmetic guy. I'm not into cosmetics. I'm not. This is raw horsepower, manly stuff. So, <laughs> alright, anyway, we'll go on. I just want to show you the differences between the two, and there you go, and that's it. Alright, the next step will be after the polish is done to the combustion chambers and everything. Let's get a little bit closer up. After that polish is done, then I'll go in here and uh, work on the exhaust, the guide around it, and conclude this. I mentioned earlier, I went with the Felpro 1404 header gasket. That gave me a little bit of a rise. It's going to raise the roof right around a hundred thousandths in the port and it's going to give me some width. That'll work fantastic with the intake port being the dimension that it is. Um, has a pretty good flow rate of balance between the two. Uh, I wouldn't want to go no bigger than that with once again with 327 inches. That's the key. Alright, so anyway, I just wanted to show you what print that I went with. And a hundred thousandths on the roof is a good shot. Um, that this right here dimension will work with a one and five eighths tube header, as well as a one and three quarters. It'll go both ways. So anyway, um, nice looking exhaust port. The heads really do have a lot of good qualities, guys. I'm telling you. All right, let's go ahead and uh, finish the exhaust port up. I got some bobtailing to do. I'll show you that, and then we're done. Hey, one of the things I do, at, and I've already had to, to flex a uh, hard hone these things, is um, just push a little. Um, this is a flex hone brush, and it puts a really nice little crosshatch in it. Um, knocks all the rough edges off with a couple of these were a little stiff in the box so i take this go through all the guide holes and then check it make sure that they're that they're loose it not only gets debris but like i said it does put a little bit of a cross hatch on them okay down to the valve job which uh that was rough as a cob some of these were out pretty good uh when i originally did them some of them were out as much as three thousandths so i had to go back in 60 30 it and reposition it but i got them now where all of them is within one thousandths of seat run out so pretty much at the end of the day we have to hone the guides we have to go in there and redo the valve job on these heads from the factory if you don't do that then what you end up with is you're going to not be able to seal, and in some cases, they even stick the valves in the guides. These are now a perfect set of Pro Comps ready to rock and roll.